Hi, Dave here from Talkie Box. Um, so the episode that you're about to see is going to be a little bit different from previous episodes of the podcast that we've done because I screwed up. Uh, I forgot to hit record on the cameras. <laughs> so um, we still have the audio from the, the show. We just don't have the video feeds from it because, again, I screwed up. <laughs> but that does bring me to a good point. Um, if you or someone you know lives in the Atlanta area or the northeastern-ish uh, Georgia area and would like to help out on the show, either being guests on the show, working cameras, working the boards, the audio, and stuff like that, please hit us up on Facebook. You know, Send us a message on Facebook or email us at uh, TalkieBoxPodcast at gmail.com, and we'd love to have you. Uh, likewise, we're also still looking for people to do uh, animation and graphic design, so all that stuff, please you know, message us on Facebook or email us at TalkieBoxPodcast at gmail.com. And uh, we'd love to have you and maybe even pay you a little bit. Not a lot. Not a lot of money. Anyway, here is uh, this episode of the TalkieBox Podcast. Again, I'm sorry that there's no video. I'll probably put up some pictures or something, kind of like we used to on the first videos on YouTube. Enjoy. Live in Shadow Bear Studios, it's the Talkie Box Podcast, as cold as the Rocky Mountains. It is oh, man. frigidy. We had some snow. Yeah. We did, yeah. We had a lot of snow. We had like six so to eight that's, inches. That's yeah. fitting. Did you pick that, or was it just cycled up? He picked it. Yeah. You picked that for the We've occasion? had that one for a while. I just want to wait till it's actually cold to, to use that one. Uh, yeah, see, we, uh, that's why he's the host. <laughs> yep. Because, uh, you know. The, all the planning. All the planning. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, we, <laughs> uh, no, but we were told we were going to get about an inch of snow, uh -huh. and it ended up being um, a lot more than that. Yeah, a lot more. And as typical in uh, in Atlanta, when it snows, the entire state shuts down. Yeah, for a nobody, day or two. nobody can handle it. Which understandable, given everybody expected an inch and got eight. Yes. You know? Um. And and no one around here is prepared for eight inches of snow. No, like it's just not how it works in Georgia. There's not enough um, chain tires or salt trucks yeah. or anything like that. But to fortunately, really... it wasn't near a lot of power outages across the state. But it yes. wasn't nearly as bad as snowpocalypse two years ago no, when no. everybody was trapped on the interstate yeah. for like twelve hours, freezing. Snowpocalypse. That was you know actually S and M Brian actually got ice down in Orlando. Mm. Like that's how far that storm kind of reached. Like it ain't any snow or anything, but it was definitely like. Ice on the windshield kind of stuff, you know. Wow, I thought Walt Disney had had paid to so keep the weather nice. And keep the weather nice down there for know. a little bit longer. Maybe he did in the, uh, you know California Disney, but mm. you know that makes sense. Not down in the Florida, the, the Florida. Yeah. Da, 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 da. yeah, lost power for like two days. Basically abandoned ship. Yeah, uh, spent about fifteen hours or so without power. You know, eight of them sleeping, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Freezing your nuts off, and then it was just like, nope, hmm. I'm done, and fled south. I was actually really impressed about Dawsonville. Like, we didn't lose power, we didn't lose internet, nothing. Everything was fine. Yeah, it was just cold. Yeah, we got hit by a lot of snow, mm. and uh, of course, you know, people don't like to go to work when it's snowy. Nope, I don't. I don't like to either. Nope, no. But uh, you know, overall, I think a pretty safe snowstorm. Yeah. Not a lot of. Damage aside from, you know, lost power and people right. being cold. I actually, uh, so I work I work in a kitchen at a restaurant, and, and I got there on that Friday that, that snowed around 3, which is when I was supposed to clock in, and I see them already dumping the, the fryer oil. I was like, what's going on here? And I walk inside, and a girl's like, oh, they have you come in to close, to help close? I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, we just closed. Like, what... No one would bother to tell me this. <laughs> Not a phone and call. I get, in, I get in the kitchen like, and she's like, hey, did somebody forget to tell Dave that we're closed? And my boss is like, no, I texted him. He just never responds to my texts. He just ignores my texts all the time. I'm like, I don't have a single text from you. That like, sounds like something one. you would do though, Dave. I mean, I would, but I didn't. And I showed her, like, I don't have a single text from you. And she shows me the text message. And sure enough, she sent a text message. And then she goes, this is your number, right? Nope. She'd been sending just random stuff. Yeah. Some dude it wasn't somewhere even, else. It wasn't even close to my number. It was the completely different area code and everything. 
So somebody that probably, you know, yeah. used to work for a long time ago Maybe. is like, I am not coming in. <laughs> I quit three years ago. <laughs> I don't know what your problem this is. This is not happening. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, introductions. We didn't do that. No, I'm Justin. That's Justin. Hey. I'm Justin. Way Jason take the over lead. there. Yeah. Wait, I like that. That's nice. Yeah. Arr, I'm, I'm going to say my name first. I'm Jason. <laughs> and I'm uh, Dave, the host. The original trio again tonight. Mm. Yep. You know, yep. keeping it real. The OGs. O3s. The original goobers. <laughs> no. Yeah, other than that, uh, what, are we just staring at Jason's handiwork there? Yeah, I like it. I think it. I did a good job. I like it. Beware yeah. the Grim Reaper. I don't know if it comes across or if the wreaths kind of drown it out. It looks a little busy, but whatever. No, no, I think it plays. I think it plays. It, for some reason, it reminds me a little bit of The Nightmare Before Christmas. You know, it's spooky yeah. and cheerful mm -hmm. all at the same time. Like, beware, because this is a sad person who's going to wreath your houses. Sounds like holiday fun we talked about last. <laughs> last similar. <week. laughs> similar. Uh, what's that guy, Krampus or whatever? Krampus, is it? yeah. Isn't there like a sort of a theme for horror holidays yeah it's mm -hmm. it's it's santa claus's foil he mm. comes in and he uh you know fucks kids shit up he steals all the naughty kids away from their parents i thought that was the grinch is this them. like an updated grinch no the he... grinch steals the presents he steals christmas the krampus like steals and eats children or something like oh that. okay yeah, yeah he's much he makes, darker he turns it up a notch right. yeah he like throws him into a sack and Brings him back to the South Pole or wherever the fuck he's from and eats them. I guess. Eats that's, them, I that's guess. High maintenance. That seems. Like, why don't you just like eat on the go? <laughs> well, I'm to, sure he, he snacks a little bit, right? To take these kids all the way back. Yeah, I feel to, like I want some to more the South Pole. I feel like I want some more information, you know, look up on, some this, information? on this Krampus character, yeah. mm. and not the movie that there are apparently several of. Yeah, I remember one came out not too long ago, actually. All right. Krampus. Krampus. Yeah. He is a horned anthropomorphic figure described as half goat, half demon, who during the Christmas season punishes children who have misbehaved in contrast to St. Nicholas, who rewards the well-behaved with gifts. Yeah. So he it, gets the naughty list. Yeah, that's basically what I was thinking. Like they, they, It's not really a foil so much as like, it's like, I got the good ones, you got the bad ones. And oh, okay. Take care that's of That's kind of messed up. Because Santa keeps that list. He makes that list. Yeah. He probably gives the naughty list over to Krampus. Yep. It's one of and those. you know, there's, there's some kids where he's like, this motherfucker's naughty as shit. Mm-mm. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, what you I know kids. he was good this year, but he's been a dick so much in the past. No, he's going to Krampus' list. It's, it's customary to offer Krampus schnapps, a strong distilled fruit brandy. Krampus instead of milk booze, and cookies. <laughs> yeah, instead of milk and cookies, yeah. you leave him schnapps. All right. Does so. he not take your kids if you do that? I, I'm i having... I'm, I'm he gets a little... Him. And then they got a better chance of slipping out of his grasp. <laughs> getting all dodgy. I'm, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get, get up. Next year, kid. <laughs> it's you and me. But I'm too drunk right now to do anything. Right now, I'm going to just get back out of your door. Yeah. I don't fuck with you. Next year, I'm starting at this house. That's how <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> Uh, so Krampus. Yeah. Yeah. Are there There's are there a, other Well, I mean the Grinch, you mentioned the Grinch, mm. you know. I I don't know if that's a, like a patent pending copyright sort of situation, but the Grinch It probably yeah, is. It's probably. probably we're probably not allowed to say it. Or yeah. I don't know. That's but, Dr. Seuss, right? Yeah, yeah. Dr. Seuss. Yeah. It's, it's so that's that's probably pure Dr. Seuss. It might be based on some kind of a a a folklore or something like that. Yeah. I feel Maybe. like it probably pulls some references from Krampus. Like sort of evil. Well, which came first, though? Krampus. Chicken. Definitely. You think so? Definitely Krampus. Oh, yeah? Is there a, a date on there? Like uh, Krampus was invented or <laughs> was spawned, I guess? Because he's like half goat At demon. At the dawn of time. That's when he came around. All right. Uh, all the way back, at least until the 17th century... Yeah, oh, it's a wow. bit before Dr. Seuss's time. Okay. Yeah, a bit before that Dr. Seuss's so time. So maybe the the Grinch is actually like a, a lighter version of Krampus. Like a toned down Krampus. Okay. Or perhaps the raving of a lunatic Dr. Seuss. Could be. Perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> perhaps that's what it is. Yeah. Unless we've all seen the drawings. Mm-hmm. 
And the one fish and the two fish. The, the, the red fish. The red with the blue. blue. Yeah. yeah. All the those. fish, man. All of them. There's several. Several, several, several. I mean, I'm honestly jealous. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, for him to have had such a literary command over, you know, like, something that he probably was just like, I think I'll churn out 50 books today. <laughs> you know, like, what's, what's my theme? Eating breakfast. Got it. <laughs> like, hmm, Let's something do it. weird and colorful, green eggs and ham. Because, you know, I'm not rich yet. <laughs> so we'll go with green eggs and ham. And I'll just discuss all the different ways or I could and places that I could have this breakfast. Yeah. Boom. One hour of time. <laughs> and he is like $40 million on that book. Yeah. Well, not for him. He probably didn't see. No, much he didn't of that, see as much of it. Still, as... legendary in name. Yep. Yep. You all know Green Eggs and Ham. Mm -hmm. All you... two of us. Yeah. Oh. I mean, do you not? No, I do. All right. Yeah. Well, all about it. Sounds like I was proven right by yourself. Yeah. So during that conversation, uh -huh. I remembered something that happened that really made me excited that we haven't actually talked. I mean, we've we've touched on it before, but it actually happened. Yeah. Is the Marvel Disney thing? Yep. And how, like, the Disney and, and Fox merger going on. I'm very excited. Is yep. it happening? Yeah, like, the deal happened. It's happening. They've signed off on it. Yep. So that means and you're going to start seeing some X-Men in the MCU. Yeah, now a, it's bunch a, of, a bunch of, of hidden gonna... money overseas has moved to a different bank <laughs> account <laughs> hidden overseas. Yeah. All right. So now yeah. it's a, a matter of how they're going to start incorporating those, you know, previously Fox-owned things into the MCU. Are we getting all stuff. of it? As far as I know, I, no, I, I just hope no. it doesn't disrupt things like Legion. Like I really yeah. want to see Legion continue. I think they've only had one season of it so far. Well, I mean, I, I imagine the stuff that's already there is going to stay its own thing. Yeah, and they can expand on that as they. I want. think maybe with the exception of the whole X Men franchise, I think Disney's going to want to incorporate that in MCU. Sooner I hope they do later. Uh, um, but mutants are going to start popping up. Everywhere, and they'll come up with a reason as to why mutants are everywhere. Yeah, they'll, they'll tie like, hey, it. Hey, by the way, there are mutants. No, they'll tie it in somehow. Yeah, and which it, means you'll get a fresh cast on everybody. Mm -hmm. Even Wolverine, I think they'll recast. Even though Hugh Jackman has said that he would be interested yeah. in playing him, I think for the for the purposes of continuity yeah. and starting fresh, they'll recast. Yeah, I'm sure they'll come up with a, a new younger Wolverine, but I I I would imagine they'd have him still be like if they ever need to do an old man Logan type thing, he's the one for it. He's the one. Or even but, like a alternate universe kind of, uh, you know, crossover event. Which would be fun. Yeah. Now I finished watching, uh, the two Netflix series that I had not watched in the MCU. Luke Cage and... No, The Defenders and Punisher. Oh, okay. Uh, both phenomenal. Yeah. Both really, really good. Defenders was a little shorter than I would have liked. Yeah. yeah. I literally watched the entirety of the series in a day. It was only what eight episodes. Eight think? episodes, yeah. yeah. But it was it was very good. It had just enough super in there. It wasn't. Mm. Uh, it didn't feel too down to earth, but it wasn't completely blown up and crazy. My only my only complaint about Defenders was I felt it was it was it was all like Daredevil's thing. Like it was it was Daredevil and Elektra and and the Hand, which also was an Iron Fist thing, but mm -hmm. like. Iron Fist talked about the hand a lot, but like Daredevil was all about that shit, and mm -hmm. it seemed to mostly be about him. Yeah, and, of course. And it's like Jessica Jones almost had no reason to be there. Same with Luke Cage. To me, I still enjoyed the show. I thought it was done well for what they had to work with, but I, I just felt yeah, it I wasn't mean, some awesome story that they told. I feel like they they definitely kind of um, <clears throat> just wrote Jessica Jones in there, like I'm doing this for my client. Yeah. All right, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I get it. But I wish there would have been a better reason, like if they would have somehow connected Kilgrave to the hand in some way, that would have been like cool. Um, not, we got a trailer for, for Jessica Jones Season 2. Yeah, we do. Which is great that it's coming out. I have no idea what it's about. The trailer tells you virtually nothing. Nothing. But I feel like that's that's better than those trailers that seem to tell you too much. Yeah. Uh, have you guys seen the trailer for uh, the new Jurassic Park or no. new Jurassic World? Mm -mm. Uh, I saw that the trailer was coming. Like I saw some preview bit that did that. Yeah. Like trailers coming out tomorrow. A trailer, but I never trailer. Saw the tra yeah, <laughs> I never actually saw the trailer for it. So I want to say this. Uh. I want to see it uh -huh. because it looks like a thrill ride. Yeah. 
I will also say that having seen the two minute trailer, I believe I have already seen it. Yeah. Uh, it it leaves nothing to the imagination. It's it's practically goofy. Like it's it's a goofy trailer. Yeah. Um, it just but, it feels so over the top, and just everything that they're doing to tie in why they're doing what they're doing mm. is like ridiculous and kind of um, you know it, they're they're grasping at straws. Yeah. Like why. In the fuck <laughs> would anybody go back to a dinosaur island for a fifth fucking time? Yeah. Weaponizing them. Yeah. That would be my the way they I put write. laser beams on them. Exactly. They're actually they're laser saving rappers. the dinosaurs from an exploding island. Oh well, that's... the island's going to explode, so they're going to save them. And that's then the dinosaurs sweet. will kill a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. Like you said, it's a two minute trailer. That's too long for a trailer. Too long. There's no need for that. Like, they get very gratuitous in some of the action scenes, and some of them feel like climactic action scenes. Yeah. Like, the, you're expecting it, like, the hour and 55 minute mark. Like, all right, we're closing it down. Oh, no, danger! And they're saved. Wow, they're saved, and what a save it was. But now I feel like I'll go into the climax of the movie and be like, well, oh, hear it, hear it, hear it, hear it, hear it. There it is. All right, cool. Yeah. Um... But it still looks good. It looks like it has some great special effects. I love dinosaurs. Dinosaur DNA. Dino DNA. I yeah. love dinosaurs. So it lo- I, it's definitely a movie I want to see. But when you see the trailer, it's yeah, it's goofy. Well, it's pretty since, goofy. Since this movie, they've actually discovered many examples of mosquitoes and ticks and large mites and stuff like that that have actually been buried in amber. Uh, yeah. throughout the, the millennia or whatever and have Dino genetic DNA. DNA intact. Yeah. yeah. They found a tail. But they're most, um, all of it is from uh, the bird flip. Yeah. Mm. Like when dinosaurs started to develop into birds, yeah. like that was when the parasites really started to, to take hold. They, they, got- they, they found a tail in amber, it was probably like five years ago now, where it was like, it was just the tip of a tail, perfectly preserved in amber with feathers. And it was a dinosaur tail with feathers that yeah. has DNA in it. But they also, they don't want to run the risk of destroying the sample to try and extract the DNA. Mm-hmm. But they have it. They have that tissue that they could extract DNA from. That's really cool. But the genome, like putting together the genome on something like that, we've been putting together the human genome for... Decades, yeah, and it would take a long time to do something like that for a dinosaur. One thing, yeah, but as really a processing cool. speed gets better and better, those kind of things become yeah. shorter time constraint wise. One thing I found really cool is that these movies, you know, especially the first one, has really brought up this huge resurgence of, of looking into dinosaurs and stuff. And I mean, knowing what we know now about dinosaurs that we've just found out in the past few years, we can look back at that first movie and like a lot of that was wrong. <laughs> a lot of that movie was wrong. Um, but I, I, I think it's really cool that, that, you know, this Michael Crichton's legacy more or less is that he's, he's really caused this resurgence of research into, yeah, like spark the, the uh, curiosity into dinosaurs yeah. and also various other prehistoric Yeah. Did you ever read animals? the books, the dress part books? I did not. They're really good. Yeah. They're Michael better Crichton. than the movies and, and they, they, it's, it's funny how, how eventually They've started adding things into the movies that were already in the books. Like the in the Jurassic World, you have the one that can like it could kind of uh, chameleon. You know that was in the first book. Yeah, and, and, they, and, they and never that, bothered to try to do that the, in the movies. The Doctor who was in the first one, who was also in the first Jurassic World. Yeah, Doctor Wong or whatever. Mm-hmm. He was a, a prominent character apparently in the first book. Yeah. Also, so. uh, Hammond, the old guy, total dick in the books. Yeah, and totally gets killed, too, yeah, I believe. I think he does, yeah. Spoilers for a mo- book that came out 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> book, Sorry! Book spoilers <laughs> if you guys are reading Old Crichton. Yeah. Yeah, he's an asshole who's like... like it. He's the exact opposite of Hammond in the movies. Because in, in the movies, he's like, we spared no expense. You know, everything, you know, we, we're just spending money just trying to get the best stuff. In the books, he's like, that costs way too much money. I mean, legitimately, I feel like science fiction mm. and science fiction writers has always driven science, like, oh, for like sure. push technology, because all of these kids or whatever, they, they get into science and they oh, yeah. get into science they fiction. Say, I wonder if I can make that happen. And then they grow up 
thinking around mm. these constructs that writers have created just out of their imagination, yeah. but they're pondering the physics of it and like, oh, well, let me schematic yeah. the entire Starfleet. Yeah. You know, that well, kind it's, of it's kind of like, you know, they, they say that art imitates life, and I think technology does the same thing. Like, technology imitates art in the sense that you, you find something that someone's created and they say, how can I make that happen? Yeah. Like, I know... That's something that I could make happen. So how would I make it happen? Yeah, I wonder how many how many scientists and engineers you can go out and find and be like, "What really got you into this line of work?" And they're like, "Star Wars." Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. And I want to build that. Yep, <laughs> I made a jetpack because uh, I watched James Bond as a kid, and <laughs> yeah, I wanted to build a jetpack. Yeah. What was that Q? Wasn't Q the inventor for yep. James Bond? Yeah, he sure was. Or the code letter yeah, for the quartermaster is what it stood for. But, yeah, for yeah. the inventor. Quartermaster. Yeah. What did M stand for? Uh, I, I never read the books. Hmm. Some good you are. Thanks. What about 007? What does that stand for? It's code name. For? Or code number, I guess. For what? For uh, James Bond. Yeah. He was the seventh uh, double, out of double agent. He was uh, a double agent? Or Probably. Double, double O agent yeah. or whatever. <laughs> I've always, like, there's so many fan theories that go along with James Bond, too. Like, that James Bond is itself is a code name that's just given to whoever's being that, that agent at the time. Well, or whatever. I think that's more, yeah. that's not uh, the actual writer. That's more, like you said, the fan theory yeah, yeah. because James Bond has been played by, by so many, many actors yeah. with so many styles of being James Bond yeah. that they want to create a linear universe mm -hmm. rather than like, oh, this is a different take. This is a different take. Like, no, all of these are James Bond. Right. This was the best James Bond. <laughs> right. You know, like. Yeah. His real name is Nig Nigel Binglesworth. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a really badass agent. They're like, you're, you're James Bond. We're like, well, my name's Nigel. The fuck it is. Your name is James Bond. It's yeah. not Nigel Listen we're worried James. about. It's Binglesworth. <laughs> okay, you gotta, sorry. Yeah. There's just something about that name. It just not having it. I don't like it. Yeah. I just don't care for it at all. What is uh, the worth of a Bengals? A Bengals worth? Mm. But, yeah. uh, about seven. About seven. Yeah. I do zero, believe zero, that. Seven. But that's the great thing about the James Bond Enterprise is that it can just be recycled and have a new name and a new face slapped on it, yep. and there's never really an issue with it. Well, you know, they do yeah. the same thing with Doctor Who. Well, they explain that in the show, though. They do explain that in the mm -hmm. show, but that that whole thing actually started because of of an actor. Like, yeah. like, the first Doctor Who actor, like, was going through... He got really sick or something. He got really sick. He couldn't, like, remember his lines and stuff like that, but this, the show was proving successful, yeah. so they just wrote in this thing where he can change bodies, mm -hmm. and then it just... Which, exploded from there. I find it kind of funny, because every now and then they'll show... I, I saw a commercial just yesterday that had the first doctor in it, but it's not him. Like they they got because that guy died like shortly after they did the first series of mm -hmm. of of Doctor Who. So whenever they had to bring in the first doctor, they got a guy that looked like him, and now he's the first doctor. Yep. Even though he's not, he's not the first doctor. No. Well, and there actually, there's there's a little bit of I don't want to say controversy because I think that's the wrong word, mm -hmm. but. Uh, the internet's definitely a chattering because they announced the new doctor yep. who's going to be replacing um, Capaldi. Yeah, Peter Capaldi. Yeah. And uh, it's the first female doctor. Yes. The first female doctor. Which so. I think is awesome. That's I think great. it's really cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with it. Yeah. Um, I definitely fell behind on the Capaldi series. I wouldn't mind catching up on that. Yeah, and I saw the first season of Capaldi and I haven't seen any since then, but I also haven't had cable since then, I don't yeah. think. Um, I, do, I do remember when. Uh, a couple years ago, I was like, man, I, I think that they, it's a brown time. They should do, you should have a female doctor. And the very next episode I watched, uh, Missy showed up, the female master. And I was like, oh, all right. Yeah. At least we see that can happen. Yeah, it, can, it definitely can happen. So it's, it's uh, I'm excited for it because I, I definitely want to see what they do. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you never know how it's going to turn out. Like yeah. the, the funny thing about Doctor Who is if you're watching it, you always resist the next doctor a little bit at first. Yeah. You always resist them. 
Um, like because you've gotten used to this one, you know. Yeah, you've gotten used, used to, to that this doctor. This is who the doctor is. And stuff. Like when I first started watching the series, and it was um, <clears throat> the ninth doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, I uh, Chris, Eccleston. Chris Christopher Eccleston. Yeah. Um, I you only had one season of him, and then you went on to David Tennant. The right. first few episodes with David Tennant, I'm like, I don't like this guy. Like, I just don't like him as the doctor. Yeah. And Chris Eccleston, that was my doctor. He was my doctor. Yeah. Now David Tennant is my doctor. He's yeah. he's the Doctor Who that I really know and love. Yeah. Matt Smith did a great job. Mm -hmm. Peter Capaldi did a good job. They're all different in their own right. Yeah. But David Tennant is he's my doctor, doctor number ten. I don't have a, a my doctor because I, I really like Chris Eccleston. I really like David Tennant and I really like Matt Smith. Those are my doctors. Yeah. Uh and I and I enjoyed everything I saw from them. I was very impressed with all three. They were they're different in their own ways. Um, but I thought they were great. I, I'm very sad that Chris Eccleston has no desire to be a part of Doctor Who anymore. No, nope. like he doesn't show None whatsoever. For anything that they do, and I don't get it because I mean he was he was he got people back into Doctor Who after all that time of not having Doctor Who. He's the one who was the one that brought him back. Well, could have just been falling <laughs> out with some upper echelon. I, I think that's what it was. It was Might something with that. Yeah. Yeah. Fight with corporate. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. No. But it, it sucks that <clears throat> he's not a part of it anymore and that, you know. Now, something like Doctor Who, because they're all time lords, yep. right? Like Timey you wimey. Would, you would figure that the show itself would be written to be very uh, future proactive, like rather than being um, reactive to society mm -hmm. and like, oh, we're finally getting a female doctor. Like, I feel like... Doctor Who should be ahead of the curve. Like, they should... Yeah. I mean, just because of the, the sample of, of stuff that they're doing, all the time and dimensional travel and stuff like that, you know, you figure, like, they would have foreseen <laughs> women being you know, they're not equals. actual Time Lords, right? Like, well, that... <laughs> that didn't make the show. <laughs> but when you're writing, as a Time Lord, you have to think like, like a, a Time, time Lord. Lord. I suppose that's... <laughs> More or less true? I don't know. Oh, trust me. It's true. Oh, is it? Because you said it? Because I'm a writer. Uh, for Doctor Who? <laughs> for Doctor Who. I mean, He's never gotten paid. They don't. And they <laughs> They've don't never used it. any of it. <laughs> they don't read it or pay me. I've definitely written it out and sent it to somebody. Put an envelope, put it in the mailbox. <laughs> Do not return to sender. <laughs> no address. No. Oh, you writers. Always... Making jotting up stuff. Shit. Just jotting <laughs> shit Making down. up shit left and right. That's but you. I, I do want to get back into watching Doctor Who. I want to finish the Capaldi series. I'm very excited for the girl that they got playing uh, the new Doctor Who. I like her in the things I've seen her in. She mm -hmm. was in Black Mirror. She yep. was in Broadchurch. She great was. Job Broadchurch. Great job. Have they ever had um, an American? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, sir. It's that, that would be another one that would get a whole shit ton of backlash if they had yeah. an American Doctor. Um, because, you know, like the... The, the sexists out there are already up in arms about Doctor Who being a woman. Mm -hmm. yeah. You throw an American, and all of those British sexists are just going to be yeah. beside yeah. themselves. I like now the funny I thing like Brits, and I like a male. <laughs> <laughs> but there's Brits, so many no tits! <laughs> Brits, no tits! <laughs> we, that should not be a hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> not do it. I don't know. That might get some press. Oh, God. <laughs> If we can spin it around the web a couple of times, uh, no, I don't like it. maybe maybe um, some curiosity clicks. The, the funny thing about that though is how many, like so many people will be so pissed off about it, but there's so many British actors who put on an American accent and and do all these American movies and yep. TV shows and mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, House did it, and uh, you know, um, what's his damn name? Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie. Did yeah, it. Walking Dead. Right? And what the guy yeah. from The Walking Dead. Fun, you, Laurie? Fun? No, no, no. The the guy, the lead from The Walking Dead. Oh yeah, okay, you, okay. You're talking about Andrew uh, Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. Whose real name is not Lincoln? It's a very British name, like Binglesworth. It's <laughs> it's something along those lines. It's but very British. What I was saying about House was like when when uh, Hugh Laurie auditioned for it, he put on this this American accent, and the creator, whose name I can't think of right now, uh, was like. This is what I've been looking for, a great American actor to come in here and do this job. And he didn't find out for like a while that Hugh Laurie was not American. I didn't find out for a while. Yeah. His American accent is superb. It's fantastic. Like, but yeah, it turns out he's been doing British comedy for years. Oh, for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I, 
I actually, I mean that he makes that whole show. It's like, fantastic. The only reason House is worth a damn is because of his yeah. his portrayal of the character. It's one of those things where you you just cannot see someone else in that role. No, not in the same light. No, but you find out Andrew Lincoln's real name. Is it Bigglesworth? <laughs> For some reason, it's not showing me on that app, and I, I know I've maybe Wikipedia maybe, probably. Maybe he petitioned to have it taken down. Because nobody, nobody told my name was Bigglesworth. No. Uh, it's it's it, it's I don't like Bigglesworth. I keep getting all this fan mail <laughs> out there to the Bigglesworth estate. <laughs> my grandma doesn't even know what I do. Yeah. Uh, oh, his hell, birth name is Andrew Clutterbuck. <laughs> Why wouldn't he keep that? That's amazing. <laughs> that's, got, that's got name recognition right yeah. there. Oh, wow. Andrew Clutterbuck. That's fantastic. Saying. It's a great name. It's such a great name. I mean, I get Andrew Lincoln. It, I mean, it, it, it I has got like, yeah. Andrew Lincoln, though. I remember Benedict Cumberbatch. Yeah. So I'm just Bandersnatch saying. Cumberbund. <laughs> <laughs> Bandersnatch Cumberbund. Bandersnatch yeah. Cumberbund. I would remember that name. Like yeah. If that was. Andrew Cold? Clutterbuck. Cuddlebutt? Clutterbuck. <laughs> Clutterbuck. 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 Yeah, I'd Clutterbuck. totally keep calling him Cutter, Cuddlebutt. <laughs> In fact, if I ever meet that Cuddlebutt. guy. Cuddlebutt. Hey. How's it Cuddlebutt. going? Mr. Cuddlebutt. <laughs> Mr. Cuddlebutt, I just had some questions pleasure. for you. <laughs> <laughs> questions for you. Hashtag let's do lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cuddlebutt. Oh, uh, I, yeah. He is in Atlanta, right? Don't they still film yeah, occasionally do. down in this area? Yeah. I mean, not over. They do it mostly uh, like southwest of Atlanta, I think. Mm. A friend of mine, her mom actually lives in. Um, what was the name of that town in. Alexandria. No, the other one. Mm. With the governor. Mm. Um, mm, anyway, Mayberry. My friend's mom. <laughs> Mayberry. My friend's mother lives in that town, uh, which means that they actually didn't film it there. <laughs> they filmed it like a couple. Like a couple miles down the road at a different town, and just called it Wood Woodbury. Woodbury. Mm -hmm. yeah. It looked more like the image of I the town so, they were yeah. going for. So, yeah, good old stuff. Apparently, like you, if you ever go to that town, you will see like this place roped off and everything, and you know, just Walking people. Dead filmed here. Yeah, it's cool when well, it's like series. they're actually filming it, and people are like standing around watching it. Like they have to. It to block off part of the town so people don't just wander through the shit. It's yep. it's cool when a when a series is being filmed in your town until they block traffic yeah, until That's it the, affects your daily life. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, like really fuckers. neat until you're like sitting in traffic because yeah. like oh there's a film shoot oh oh I'll burn this motherfucker down <laughs> I will burn this whole yeah. town down. I left twenty minutes to get to work. <laughs> yeah. I've been in the road for forty five. <laughs> but yeah. I remember. You're like what is it? What show is it? Walking Dead? Oh, I like that show. That's fine. It's that's all right, all right then. All right. Hey, tell them if they need any extras. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm already fired, so. I'm already late for work. Yeah. We can uh, find out some machine. What is it? A Tyler Perry movie? Fucking Tyler Perry. God damn. Does he need any extras? <laughs> <laughs> nothing. I'm, I'm nothing. It's a very Perry, competitive actually. rate. Yeah. Nothing, I'm pretty sure Tyler Perry films, films a lot of yep. stuff in Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I yeah, think he's studios. Atlanta native. Yeah. He has studios. Um, I don't particularly enjoy a lot of his works, mm. but he does make money. He puts out a lot of material. Yeah. And from time to time, there are some strokes yeah. of true humor in there. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's just playing to, you know, the more primal and dumber <laughs> side of comedy. But, you know, hey. Pays fucking bills. Yeah. Yeah. And we've all, all watched bills. movies that play to the dumber side of comedy. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, I. We've, watched... all, we've all seen a lot of Adam Sandler stuff and. Mm -hmm. Dumb and Dumber? Yeah, Dumb and Dumber. And right. that, that title tells you. Yeah. It tells you, you know exactly you know right what you're getting into. Yeah. Yeah. One of the R's is backwards, and they're like, <laughs> yeah. That's exactly how you spell it. One oh, of the I... R's. There's the one R in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one that's backwards. Yeah, it's backwards, though. It actually reminds me of this story. All right, tell me your story, Dave. Did, did I ever tell you guys about the first time I went to a strip club? No. No? Possibly. Maybe no. Okay, so years ago... I've heard this story. It's awful. <laughs> years ago, uh, it, was my, it was my buddy's birthday. My buddy's Brett's birthday. All right, I'm drawing a stripper pole. That's good. Uh, there wasn't one involved. Um, right. we, so we Still went up to Kennesaw... Pole. To, to celebrate his birthday with another friend of ours, Will. And we go out to this bar 
and it's me, Brett, Will, and a couple of Will's friends. And that's, like, the, literally the people I knew there were Brett and Will. And we go to this bar where we are the youngest people there by 20 years, at least. And so it's just old people and us, and we're just getting trashed. And eventually, these, these uh, girls show up who are friends with a friend of a friend or something. And they find out that we're there for Brett's birthday. And like, what? It's your birthday? It's your 21st birthday? And he's drunk. He's like, yeah. And like, we're going to a strip club. He's like, cool. So they were just looking for an excuse to go to the strip club. Yeah. They came across somebody who was having a birthday and like, perfect. Yeah. (laughs) So I have to sober up because I had the biggest car at the time. I was driving this old Pontiac Bonneville. So it's a big boat of a car. So and this is before the days of Uber. Yeah, this is 1954. This is like ten, no, this is about ten years ago now. I was at eleven. Years, I was twenty four at the time when this happened. Um, so we we pile into my car. Some people have to pay rent at one in the morning for whatever reason. So we go over there uh, to this apartment complex, and while they're paying rent from the back seat, I hear Brett go, "Dude," and I was like, "What?" He goes, "Dude," and I went, "Don't you puke in my fucking car." So I hear him open the door, <laughs> puke out the side. I give him some Wendy's napkins, we start going on our way. Not a sponsor. We're not even out of the parking lot yet when I hear him, dude, vomits out the side of the car again. This boy threw up six different times in Cobb County, which was impressive. At different DNA. places? Yep. Like Everywhere. just marking just territory? On the way. As he twice, went. twice on I-75. <laughs> That's like a Hansel and Gretel story. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we know how to get Follow back. Follow the trail of vomit. Yeah. So we were going to Tiffany's, which uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Tiffany's. Mm, I know that people get breakfast there. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> Tiffany's in Atlanta was just, just off of I-75. Do you remember Do you remember when there's actually a really tragic story about this bus of baseball players that went over, off the overpass and crashed? Mm-hmm. This ha- Tiffany's is literally next to that. In fact, this story happens the night after that. Okay, yeah. So Tied in the tragedy. All yeah. right. So as we get up there, we can actually see still the, the hole in the fence where this bus went over. So we get up to Tiffany's, and it's closed. We're like, well, we came all the way down to Atlanta for no fucking reason. And one of the girls goes, oh, I work on this road. There's another bar called uh, Girls Are Fun. It's like a mile down the road. Mm-hmm. like, all right, we'll go check that out. So we get in the car. We go down there. Sure enough. Girls are fun down there on the left. And it is the sketchiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Because it's in it's in this like like shopping center between like Bob's Bait and Taxes and like (laughs) Bob's Bait and Taxes. Jerry's donate your blood here or some shit. (laughs) Like like, we buy gold and blood. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's pretty much how, like, it was, Pl- it was plasma? a stupid looking place. And rose, okay. rose colored. Gold. And then up, you know, you have the sign, which is the kind where you can put the letters up, and like half of it, the lights are out, the other half is like sporadically blinking. The let- Some of the letters are missing, now it says Gil's our foo. The R is backward, like Toys R Us. Because mm-hmm. is- they like to play to the pedophile yeah, crowd. Yeah, and that's where the similarities ended, by the way, with Toys R Us. So we, we pull in, and we're like, this is gross. But it's two in the morning... Let's yeah, see what happens. Club. So, or it's like 145 or something. But we go in the door. We open the door. And this very cute girl walks by. She's wearing this like white sort of, it looks like a long tank top that barely covers the crotch. And these like black stilettos. She's carrying two pitchers of beer. It's like, hey guys, come on in. She'll be with you in just a sec. And she goes through this door and no one ever heard her from her again. Um, out of the back comes this girl who was like, Heroin thin, just kind heroin of disgustingly thin. gross. Like thin. super heroin. Yeah. And like. Cake. Like no. No, just like gross. Heroin. Black bra, black, st- like, no, purple bra, purple thong, black stilettos. Looks like she just loves working there. I think about this story a lot. Yeah, uh, this, this <laughs> is 11 years ago. You got oh a lot of detail. Yeah, Details. It's, it's stuck in my mind so much, this place. So I found out later, girls are fun. Is known for two things: uh, private rooms, glory holes. You know what a glory hole is? Yeah, I know what everybody a knows what a glory hole is. But should please I, explain, should I explain it. Explain? Yeah, yeah, of yeah, course. The glory so hole. a glory hole is a literal hole in a wall, typically in a typically bathroom in like a stall. bathroom stall or something like that. Yeah. Um, and and a gentleman can walk in and insert his penis into this hole, and on the other side is hopefully a woman 
Ideally. Who will, who will do nice things to your penis with her mouth, hands, or whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be a woman. It could be a dude. Because you have it no could be idea. A goat. Yeah, you'll know. <laughs> you just know that something's happening downstairs. If it's and a goat, it, And it might be viral. <laughs> That's um, awesome. I guess ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Uh, so this place apparently had those things. Uh, the girl did not offer us glory holes. Uh, she did offer us private rooms and went down the rates of those rooms, which was, I think, $25 per 10 minutes. Um, and so uh, it's it's Brett's birthday. This random guy that's with us who we have never met before tonight goes, here's here's uh, 30 bucks. Just bring me my change and give him the 10-minute thing. And then I'll also get a beer. And she goes, oh, we don't serve alcohol here. And I'm like, huh, could have sworn that girl had beer when she walked through that door. Not important. Doesn't matter. So, um... Stripper ghost. Yeah. So, <laughs> so she takes Brett down this room, comes back, gives dude his change, tells us we have to wait outside because she has to lock the door because they're closing. Skeevy. So, uh, we go outside, and we're not even, like, it's kind of cold. It's like April. It's, we're not even all in the car yet, and Brett comes walking out. We're like, nope. That ain't ten minutes, man. What the hell? So, uh... Turns out, now we assumed, I don't know, I've never been to a strip club at this point. This is my first one, and it's not going the way I planned it. Mm. But I assumed with a private room, you have your choice of girls, right? There'd be a lineup and be like, this one, this one, this one, it's my birthday, let's go. Nope, he got uh, he got strung out bitch. And so, uh, apparently, he goes and sits down, she leaves. He's sitting there in this folding chair in the middle of an empty room. Uh, eventually, she comes back in rubbing oil on her boobs, and he vomited all over her. And then she goes, do you want to leave? And he goes, yep, have a great night. <laughs> and walks out. And then the guy goes, did you get my money back? He goes, no, I figured that's like a maintenance fee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You vomit on a stripper, I, I assume that's a maintenance fee. Yeah. So that was the like first time. Like a hose time. is going to take a few quarters. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time I ever went to a what I guess is called a strip club. Yep. That may be the saddest tale I've ever <laughs> been part of. Winter fun. <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. It was a night. Let me tell you. Yeah. I sobered up for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a not a big fan of strip clubs myself. I'm not I've, either. I've been and not twice. just because of that. I've been to two different strip clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time I went to a strip club, uh, I spent way too much money yeah. just because you know I was nervous and and you know trying to be. You know, a, a nice patron, like, oh, well, here's some dollars for you. <laughs> you enjoy yeah. those. You're putting your way through college, right? Yeah. Uh, ATM fees a... were outrageous. Yeah. Like, oh, I need another $20. What's the ATM fee? $17. <laughs> like, all right, Jesus. I'm If I'm going to pull out money, I'm going to pull out a lot of money. Yeah. Um, my buddy that I went had won and got, like, you know, private dance and whatnot, and mm. he fell in love with a stripper. It don't, it don't take yeah. long. No, he <laughs> fell in love. He fell in love, and that's okay. Um, but I ended up spending way too much money. It just it put a real damper on it. Yeah. And I feel like there's not a lot of point in spending money on boobs I can't touch. Right? Like, I have a problem with that. Yeah, that's that's always been my issue, with, which is I don't want to spend money to have a girl take her clothes off and not sleep with me. Right. Which is the whole point of strip clubs, it turns out. Yeah. Just is to make money by not having sex. Well, yeah. It's, it's more, I think, to... Or just not letting people know Spark the sex. juices, to get your imagination going, to, you know... And I've known yeah. plenty of guys that have actually hooked up with strippers through strip it clubs. doesn't happen. And, like, or can't happen. dated I'm them for a week or two. usually doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, the second time I went to a strip club was in uh, Panama City Beach. With us. With us. Yeah. All of us yeah. here. Uh, that was a good time. Yeah. That, that, that was fun. I mean, it's still it's still awkward. If you're not a, a frequent, like, strip club patron, mm. like, it can be a little awkward. You're just standing there with, like, cash in your hand, like, yeah, you look nice. <laughs> um, here's $2. <laughs> Do more. <laughs> like, will you, yeah. will, will you rub your boobs one more time? Nice. <laughs> cool. Now, here's a fiver. I assume like, you've never been then to the Claremont Lounge. I've never been to the Claremont you Lounge. You ever been to Claremont? Yeah. Oh, my God. Claremont is an experience. So I've heard. Like, it's not it's not your average strip club. Like, it's... 
it's just it's sleazier than the average club. It really like it's every I've been two or three times. It's always packed somehow. I don't even know if it's I don't even know if it's still open. It to is. Be honest, is it? Hmm. If you don't if you don't know what the Claremont Lounge is, look it up. Claremont Lounge is one of the oldest strip clubs in Atlanta. I'm pretty sure. I believe it's so. an institution of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And they still got some of their original strippers. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Like I think the youngest one there is probably or no, not the youngest. Sorry, the oldest one there is probably in her 60s or 70s, and the youngest is probably no no less than 30. Um, yeah, it's famous in Atlanta for being like the cliche. Yeah, you know, do what you gotta do, to strip club. <laughs> right, like you wanna you want a taste of true Atlanta. Yeah, the good and the bad. Then you should go to Claremont because you go to. Yep. There's some that are super fancy, and all you're gonna see are real nice chicks. But that's not real. It's <laughs> all an illusion. Yeah. Uh, not you, Claremont Lounge, you want man. the truth, it's, you go to Claremont. Yeah, and there's there's rules there. They're not <laughs> written anywhere, but there's rules you abide by. One of them is you can touch yourself, you can touch your drink. That's it. Do not touch the bar, the floor, the walls, nothing. That's gross. <laughs> yeah. It's not it's not a sanitary place. It's Well, looking at photos, <laughs> <laughs> it's um Yeah. But it, it's yeah. But I've yeah. I've been a couple of times I've taken people there for their first times and they're like I don't know how I feel about this, but I'm definitely gonna bring more people here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's what it is. Like it's just this this experience that if you live in or around the Atlanta area, you should check out. Mm. I I've been to several strip clubs, uh you know, being in the Marine Corps, I spent a lot of time in Jacksonville and there wasn't a lot to do up there, but yeah. But strip clubs and billiard halls. Um, you only I play have, so much pool, right? And you can only play so much pool. <laughs> I have uh, I've met a deaf girl stripper yeah. that just danced to the vibration right. from the bass, which was pretty cool. Was she on in rhythm? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> no. She, she, you could tell she was just kind of just doing her just own thing. Out, and yeah. the other strippers, like most of the patrons felt awkward and would avoid her and the other strippers would go up and tip her and I was oh. like, oh no, screw that noise. Like <laughs> what noise? Exactly. She can't hear a thing. <laughs> yeah. Screw that God. noise. So I walked right up and just smiled big and was like, You're doing great and yeah. just gave her some money. Now you you're the one who told me about like you will go and like look them in the eyes, right? Yeah. And they get real uncomfortable. They with it. do. Because I'm trying to find I'm a collector of stories. Yeah. I've mentioned that I like to write. And souls. And, and, and <laughs> souls. <laughs> He's trying to and that's how you get it. steal the soul. Steal the soul. Well, first I want to know what it's worth. Right. i got to evaluate the soul. <laughs> and that's the part that they get real uncomfortable right. about. Because while I am like, so why are you here? Mm-hmm. Except I'm doing this with my eyes. Yeah. And they're like, I don't want to I don't want to tell you this story, <laughs> mister. So you need to get out. Yeah. You need to look right here. All right. <laughs> my tits are down here. Yeah. And they get real uncomfortable when you when you are respectful and you're like, You you seem very soulful. You seem like you have a great deal of wisdom yeah. for a stripper. What on earth has brought you to this place in this moment in time? And they don't want to tell me. <laughs> they don't want to tell me. They don't like that I'm there uh, with those kind of questions. Like, because most of the patrons are just your red blooded dudes that just want to get a hard on and then go rock the wife's world when they get home yeah. or whatever. And and that's not me. I've I You're care. I'm, and I know, no, I care more mm-hmm. about who they are and their story well, than I, I, I do I, about their gyrations. I, I don't think it's so much the like the constant eye contact that you make with them, so much as it is the constant eye contact while you have your dick in your hand. <laughs> like that, I think, is what throws them off. Well, that's what throws everybody off on the subway too. Well, yeah, it's, but, it's the damnedest thing. You'd think there's like a common denominator, but I can't find it. No, did you ever find a, a rude stripper? Um, no, I mean, I've, I've seen a stripper get irate mm-hmm. with a guest because he stole her panties. Yeah, they'll do it. Uh, and then <laughs> I, I saw that guy get, uh, bludgeoned nearly to death by like six bouncers after he smashed a rocks glass on one bouncer's head, defending himself from being knocked unconscious by the <laughs> sleeper hold. Yeah. 
Um, he got out of it, though. Huh? He got out of that sleeper Good hole. for him. Uh, he should have stayed in that sleeper he hole. Yes, he should have just like gone it. on to sleep because yeah. <laughs> he smashed that glass and, like, bouncers like ninjas came out of from the, the rafters. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> propelled down and just started beating and kicking this guy. Oh, like, man. there was one bouncer and then there was one bloody bouncer and five bouncers. <laughs> and it was like a Pokemon yeah. or something. You know, it was crazy. There was one time I went, I went with a buddy to the Pink Pony another Atlanta institution um, and we got there we got there kind of late in the night apparently and he 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 broke a hundred dollar bill had a stack of ones and we didn't use a single one of them <laughs> and uh, it like we I think we used them to tip our, our bartender I think that was about it um, but finally they're like, all right last dance of the night blah blah, blah you know and this girl comes out and just obviously didn't want to be there like she was not having it. And so, like, we thought, okay, it's the last dance of the night. We haven't given any money to anybody. Let's go sit up near near the stage. We'll put the money on, on the table. And then we'll watch the show. And we'll give her what she's worth. So, she puts on this such a lackluster show that, like... It, like, she just didn't care. Like, she didn't care. She didn't care. God. That's probably what it was. And what are their it. problems... Like, I, you know, if you're gonna go up there, I want to see some lively gyrations. But like, I, I look at it. I look at stripping. <laughs> so it's a service industry, right? It is. So it's if it's my entertainment. If my, if my server came up to me and was like, "What do you want to drink? What do you want to eat?" and that and that was the thing, you're not getting a good tip for that. Like you, you know, do the job, man. Yeah. And that's and that's how we looked at at this girl who was sitting there like, like. On her face, she was unhappy, like everything about, and then she had the nerve to go, like, give me your money. You're not doing your job now. Like, this is your part. Give it to me. And we're like, fuck this. And we just took our money and left. Huh? I was like, you can't, you can't go being a rude stripper. I mean, it is, it's tough to make a living that way. Yeah. Um, the weirdest uh, act. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, it's an act. I. It's definitely you know. She put some time and thought into it. I can't imagine it was improv. Um, <laughs> but the weirdest act I ever saw was uh, probably a, a forty-something mother of several, <laughs> and she got up on stage. She was a little bit thick, mm -hmm. uh, and you know you could tell that she had lived. A life, yeah, uh, a full life of many different things. Uh, so she's up there doing her act, and she's competing with all these young, hot, firm. Everything's right. in the right place, and bouncing off of poles and stuff. Yeah. And and she's not able to just get up there and scoot around on poles. So she's got like a little bit of a comedy routine involved in her stripping. So she gets. I think you told me about. This I've story. told you about yeah, this. Yeah, all right. She gets completely. <laughs> nude, you know, like slowly you yeah. dancing away the clothes. And as she starts to realize, like, the attentions are waning and she's not really catching enough, she goes ahead and, and sits down in front of, you know, it's, it's a walkway. It's a runway, like right. a model's runway. And so she sits down at the edge and right in front of a chair. Mm -hmm. And then she moves from person to person to person, like legs up in the air, like vagina straight on, like yeah. you're driving through a tunnel, <laughs> right? And so, <laughs> so she's she's moving around, talking to everybody, engaging the yeah. guests. Smart, uh, like sort of yeah. like creating a rapport with mm -hmm. everybody around, while others are sort of dancing along as well. But she's sort of doing this. Uh, like a one on one. Yeah. A so what brings you to Seattle? A little, a little <laughs> meet and greet. Yeah. Uh, she gets to me, and I have been enthralled <laughs> the entire time by what she's doing because it's so out of the norm, yeah. and that's what I'm all about. And so so she gets in front of me, and she can tell that she sparked my interest, right? Yeah. And so she's, she's just been talking to the other guys. She's like, hey, uh, you know, my name is candy or whatever and yeah. so where are you from and i was like yeah I'm, I'm from atlanta and she's like all right all right i've got some friends in atlanta that's a cool town I'm like oh wait a second i'm getting a phone call <laughs> now she's completely naked 
and she doesn't have a cell phone on her or anything. <laughs> that you can see. That you can see. Yeah. But wow. she says, hold on a second. I'm getting a phone call. And she, like, sort of takes a little pause, like she's listening to it ring in her head. <laughs> and then she picks up her foot. Her own foot. Her own foot and stretches it way out and puts it up to her ear. Like, it's still attached to her leg. It's not, yeah, it's yeah, not it's like a foot. fake leg. Not a okay. fake foot. <laughs> like, all right, hold on. Hello? <laughs> that would make the story slightly better, but no. Yeah. No, she stretches it out and puts her foot up to her... Up to her head. Up to her head yeah. like a phone. And I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's here. <laughs> hold on a second. And then she stretches her leg out and offers me her foot phone. Her foot phone, <laughs> and I, I took that foot phone, mm -hmm. and I said hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, I played along, and she, hello, and she loved it. Yeah, uh, I then threw her like three or four bucks, and she scooted. Like the sort next of guy. scooched <laughs> on down to the next guy. Oh, Who you? God. But, uh, so, yeah, so if you ever get into the business and that's the angle you're working, well, hopefully you find more customers like me because most people did not appreciate her shtick. No. But I thought that it was... <laughs> I thought I thought that's that's classy. That's amazing. That's classy like, comedy shit. stripping. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I don't think she really meant for it to be as funny as it was. She might have meant for it to be sexy. Because yeah, I, she was completely naked, she was but naked. there was definitely a lot of tones where, of where was you, it? It wasn't in Atlanta. I, I they're all kind of the same. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna be honest with you, like purple, um, neon, a lot of smoke. Yeah, uh, there was alcohol, okay. so it wasn't one of the ones. It wasn't Gills are food. It wasn't Gills are food. Don't have alcohol. This was an alcohol yeah. strip club, but I don't know if it was. I got to assume it was in Jacksonville because she did ask where I was from. Right. And I said Atlanta. And I feel like had I had answered that <laughs> and been from Atlanta, she wouldn't, have, Atlanta. she wouldn't have made any kind of thing about it. Yeah. Like, oh, from? I got friends in this fucking town we're in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you mean here? So, so yeah, I assume it was up in Jacksonville. Yeah. Classy. It was, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. It's the kind of stripper I want to be. Classy <laughs> A classy one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have it in you, man, mm -mm. to be a classy stripper. Mm -mm. No, you would be raunchy. <laughs> I just, I can feel it. Yeah, I mean, you got to stick with what you know. Yep. You'd be twerking on people, making them very uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I've done, I've done a few lab dances in my day. Yeah. I'm not good at it by any means, but. Yeah. I feel like Speedos I'll would be his choice. A bit. Yeah, yeah. I sh you know, shake yeah. the butt. Yeah. Twerk, twerk, twerk. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's really any any room for super tall, super skinny uh, this sounds strippers. Like a, a new outing that we're gonna do where Jason auditions for a male strip club. Yeah, which as I think that, there's one in Atlanta, uh, Swingin' Richards. As long as they let us film it, I'm fine. Absolutely, we can make this happen. I will exploit Jason every day of the week. If if we can get the strip club to agree to it, would you audition? I mean, yeah, they. I can't imagine that they would actually have me because I'm gonna go with funny. Well, of course. Uh, for the show, yeah, for my audience, you know, because I don't actually. I've tried dancing sexy, mm -hmm. and it still comes out funny. So I might as well <laughs> just embrace embrace it. what yeah. I can do with my body. It's gonna be like Jim Carrey at the Chippendales. Yeah, a young Jim Carrey, right. not no. like, not like the crazy. Not the one now. Not the now, Jim Carrey. All right. Well, he just I'm like gonna sits and stares at you in a meditation. I'm gonna pose. try to make this happen then. If, I mean, you, if you will, if you will honestly make it, make a real effort. To are you gonna to buy me some rip away Adidas? Some of those uh, if stripper, were, stripper absolutely. pants. Absolutely. The snap up stripper fucking pants. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll make I think this sounds happen. like a good idea. All right. Well, that's about all we got for tonight. That is about all we got. Really? You know what, you know what yeah. I learned tonight? What'd you learn? We can do like 20 or 30 minutes talking about strip clubs. Yeah. Well, I think you and I have more experience. He was that's more true. of a listener. I yeah. was more of a listener, but that's okay. Yeah. Never been big on strip clubs. They're not my thing. Well, I've got, got stories too much about respect. strip clubs while not being a fan of strip clubs. Yeah. So. 
You heard both of my strip club stories. Yeah. yeah. Done. That's all I got. I don't actually care about the nude part. It's more about the the strip club part. Yeah. Like the the nature. Right. You're of... like the sociologist of it. Like, uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's why they all get creeped out because you're just staring <laughs> at them with like a big dumb open grin. Just ha ha. <laughs> I'm fascinated by you as I a person. I see it. Not as soul. a body. <laughs> yeah. What'd you learn tonight? Um. I learned that Jason can creep the fuck out of some strippers. <laughs> I mean, there's really nobody. I've I've never met a soul I couldn't creep to a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you creep me out on multiple mm-hmm. regular days in places. a well lit room. Yeah, still come across as a little mm-hmm. creeper. Yeah. Just what about little. you? I already said that. What about you? Am I creeped out? Is that what you're asking, mm-hmm. or what did I learn? Because I already said what I learned, and that's it. We can do 20, 30 minutes. About I learned yeah, that, wasn't good. that if an American mm-hmm. were to be uh, the next doctor that a bunch of British guys <laughs> would get real pissed off. Actually, I bet a lot yeah. of Americans would British get pissed no off, chance. too. Yep. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, they can't just have British Time Lords. It wouldn't make any sense. Mm. I'm just saying. Like, let me see a South African Time Lord. Let me see a New Zealander. Yeah. Mm, Kiwi. You could do it. I could. I would, too. I mean, we've had, what, David Ooh. Tennant was Scottish? Mm-hmm. And then, uh, that I, I don't know about anybody else. Christopher Eccleston's Irish. Is it? Yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's well, still yeah. British, though. The island of Great Britain is United, Scotland, Wales, The United England. Kingdom. Yeah. Eccleston wouldn't be British. He'd be Irish. He'd uh, be. That's in the United Kingdom. That's not, that's yeah. not Great Britain. You are right. correct. We got hashtags tonight? Oh, no. Uh, the only <laughs> hashtag that I, I really I wanted. I did that one. You, you, you axed that hashtag, so... Yeah. Well, I guess that's it for tonight, then. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Hashtag dimmer switches. I don't (laughs) fucking know.